TVB, it's Wes Whitehead from The Playlist, and, and this week I started thinking about things that I've never made before. Coco Van, I've never made ramen, I've never made uh, any of these iconic, important dishes. And so this week I'm starting with the thing that whenever I go to a bistro, a French bistro, I, I, I order 90% of the time because I can't help myself, and that is Coco Van, but we're not going to use an old rooster today, but we are going to cook the shit out of some chicken. Break it down before we actually do the cooking. What the basic concept is, is we're going to take a chicken that we've marinated in red wine and vegetables and herbs overnight, and we're going to sear it, which means browning on all sides, and we're going to put it back into the pot and braise it with this liquid that we've marinated with. Braising is to cook in a small amount of liquid at a low heat, mise en place. This is uh, French for everything in it means that I have all my ingredients, all my tools, all set before me. I'm not going to screw something up while I'm busy chopping the onions that I should have already chopped. So to start out, the chicken itself has been marinating overnight in red wine, onion, carrot, celery, and I added a little twist myself that is not a part of the traditional recipe. I put a little bit of fennel in. In addition, there's some black peppercorns, uh, whole cloves, and also something we call a bouquet garni. This is a little cheesecloth bag that has thyme, parsley, and bay leaf in it. This is very traditional and used all the time in French cooking. First of all, we've got white button mushrooms. Yes, just simple, regular white button mushrooms. We have shallots here. You can use pearl onions, but we're looking for something small and sweet. A slab bacon, which I've cut into this sort of oblong shape. That's called a lardon. I have six tablespoons of butter. I have one tablespoon of flour. I have another cup of red wine, in addition to the bottle that we've already marinated the chicken in. Olive oil, salt, and pepper. Now that we have our mise en place in order, everything is in its place, we are ready to freaking do this! So wish me luck, we're making coco van, bitches. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take our little red wine marinade here that I've just splashed all over myself, and we're going to strain it. We are going to save all that wine and all these vegetables. Nothing will go to waste. This is French cooking. Wipe it out. Get it warm. Clean as you go. Keep yourself organized because chaos and mess is how a dish gets away from you and how people end up fucking something up. And that's easily avoidable by staying organized. Staying relaxed, staying calm. Listen to some music while you work. Drink a glass of wine. There's nothing wrong with that. Take your time. Two tablespoons. A little olive oil. We're gonna melt that. We're going to sear this chicken, okay? We're gonna do it breast side down. By leaving it whole, we can cook it for a longer period of time without it getting dry. And that means we're going to have a more fully developed, flavorful chicken. The cavity there, flip them over. See that nice browning on there? A lot of people say that when you're doing that, you're searing in the juices. You're keeping it juicy. That's absolute bullshit. What it's actually doing is creating a crust. It's creating flavor. When I'm done searing this uh, chicken in here and I put the vegetables in, there's going to be all this brown bits of goodness at the bottom of the pot. That's something the French call pong. That is all the bits of amazing, tasty, crackly goodness that are going to create a rich pan sauce, which is what this dish is all about. All right, so I got my chicken brown on all sides. Beautiful lacquered color there. Okay. Remove the bouquet garni. Put it right. It's on here. And so here, this is exactly what I was talking about. That's the fond. That's the bits that you can scrape up. And that's just pure flavor. Add that over our vegetables. Stir to coat. This is thickening. It's sort of a similar concept to uh, making a roux, which is a flour and butter mixture. Back into the pot. I'm going to do um, uh, dark meat side down, which is thigh, breast side up. We pour that back into the pot. Take our bouquet garni, throw it back in. On 
top of the chicken, freshly cracked pepper, and you're not going to touch it. You're going to do it over low heat, and you're going to leave it alone for about an hour and a half. But that's it. And braising is cooking something in liquid at a really, really low heat. We're not boiling, we're not poaching, and we're cooking it gently and slowly. Do not put this at a boil, and that's going to coax a lot of flavor out of the meat. We're going to break down the fats and the tendons so that everything is just tender and will fall off the bone more easily. While our chicken is cooking, there are a few things we can do otherwise. Uh, we're going to make some bacon lardons. We're going to render these, which means we are going to take we're going to put it at about medium, medium high heat. We're going to put our lardon in here and they're going to cook slowly. Right? Alright, so we've got these uh, lardon here looking nice and crispy golden brown. We've rendered out the bacon fat. I'm going to use our little uh, fish spatula that we talked about in five things. This on some paper towel to drain out some of that bacon fat. We don't want it to be too unhealthy. Our mushrooms. Pop them in the pan. It's got some size to them, so they're going to take a little bit. You're going to want to toss them and coat them quickly in the bacon fat, because otherwise they're going to just a couple of the mushrooms will just soak it all up, and you really want to get them coated. Medium heat. Be gentle. Look at our mushrooms nicely. Uh, brown here. They look delicious and wonderful. We're going to add our bacon back into the pan. Toss it all through. Next, shallots. We're going to use what's called a parchment lid, which is literally a piece of parchment paper that we're going to cook over these with water and butter and salt and sugar. It's kind of like caramelization when you have like caramelized onions on your burger, except we're going to do it in a much slower process, and they're going to become these sort of wilted, roasted amazingness. We're going to add two tablespoons of our butter into the pan. Melt that. As you can see, I'm putting a pinch of sugar, a pinch of salt. Sugar's going to help to caramelize this. We're essentially um, uh, we're bringing out the natural sugars in the onions with the salt, drying all that moisture out, and that sugar is going to encourage the brownie and caramelization. You're going to cover this with water, just to when they're covered. And then you take parchment paper, we'll see how it goes. So far we have curling, hopefully it won't do this. Alright, so my chicken is done. I'm going to remove this. Very important process. I'm going to let the chicken rest. If I were to cut this right now, all that juice is just going to run out. If I let it sit for about 20 minutes, it'll seize back up. We have a nice bit of chicken skin that's just sitting at the bottom there. We don't want to waste that. So we're going to put this on. We're going to scrape that up. Alright, so these are my shallots. They didn't turn out exactly like I wanted. I think I probably added too much water. Uh, and they're also, obviously, they weren't all exactly the same size. Traditionally, you use pearl onions, which are those onions about that big. And they're all the same size, so maybe that's what went wrong here. It's not really, it, it'll affect the look of the dish, but it's not going to affect the flavor. I'm going to put these in the same pan with my bacon and my mushrooms. Just pop that into the pan. And we're going to scrape the what? The fond. Very good, class. My Dutch oven, I'm going to get that back on the fire here. Add the reserved cooking liquid. Start to bring that up to temperature. This pan sauce, you can see how it's sort of thickly running down the side of the pan. That means we've reduced it nicely. I'm going to throw in my uh, mushrooms, pearl onions, transfer it into this pan. So I'm just going to coat it all. Waste. Waste not, want not. Mont a beurre. I'm pronouncing that horribly, I assume. But we're mounting the sauce, and that's not a sexual thing. I'm not having sex with the sauce. I'm going to finish it 
with this two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to swirl it in. It's going to thicken it. It's going to make it creamy. It's going to make it finish. All right, so my chicken is rested. It's, uh, it's had a nice nap, and now we're going to cut it up. When uh, taking your chicken apart, it's best to start with the thigh, which is obviously attached to the leg here. It's super easy when it's cooked like this, but you can almost you can almost just do it with your hand. Kind of pull it apart in here. You see that joint there? If this were raw, I'd just cut straight into that joint. But I mean that's that's literally it. This is my favorite part of the chicken, the dark meat. If I were to take it apart again, you can find the backbone right here. Cut straight down the backbone, and then I can just almost again using my finger. Good sharp knife, you can cut straight through the bone like that. And then I've got a beautiful breast and wing. And again, here's so you can really see there. See how those are clear juices that are running through that? That means my, my chicken is done. Cut off the end here. Pull the backbone out. There's lots of good meat on here that you can eat by your hand, including what some people consider to be the best part of the chicken. The best bite of chicken, which is the oyster right there. And even before we've had the sauce, we're going to enjoy it. There was more liquid at the bottom of the pot, partly probably because I used the, uh, the lid on there because I wanted to contain the cooking. But I want this to be slightly more thickened, so I'm just simmering this a little bit more than the recipe calls for. This has come together, it looks good, it looks thick. Labor intensive, it's gonna take you a few hours. You know, pick a nice Saturday when you got nothing to do. And, and this is your connection to, to what people have been cooking. You know, your connection to someone in France from hundreds of years ago who first made this dish. And, and I don't know, I think there's something beautiful about that. I think there's something important about connecting to our past in different ways. And you don't have to do it just through religion or tradition, but you can do it through food. And, uh, and so, you know, I got nothing more to say. Let's eat. Go. That's good. It's very good. The chicken is tender. The sauce is full of flavor. The bacon lardon is where it's at. I think there are some things that I went through in terms of adding too much water, maybe a little too much wine, didn't quite reduce it enough. But overall, I, I don't know, I'll give myself like a B plus. But I want to make it again and make it better, but I'm really glad to have finally made Coco.